video, thank you for clicking on it. I hope that by the end of the video, I will have answered the reason you clicked on this video. As per, how do we know whether to repot our orchids if we cannot see the roots once they go into the media? Because we have maybe opted to move away from clear containers, or as in my case, growing in pots where the roots cannot be assessed from the outside once they disappear into the beautiful media of choice. Because this doesn't just pertain to Lekka and self-watering. This pertains to any media if you cannot grow your orchids naturally up against a tree in your garden as per your climate and you are forced to use pots. Right, so we have a few things going on here and I have two examples, both of them by foliate because bifoliates have this notorious reputation that follow them everywhere, that they are fussy about their roots being touched, they are divas when it comes to repotting, and for that reason I pulled two examples because, in my opinion, in my situation, this is go time, and we're going to talk about why I say that, even though both orchids clearly have plenty of room in the pot to grow out a new growth, new roots, there's plenty of space. So why bother them? Especially because they're bifoliates and it's always a little bit like dicey. Am I going to keep the old root system or is she going to throw a strop and just dump the old root system? Right. As with any repot, if at all possible, always wait for new root systems to start growing, be it from one new growth or two. If you have two leads and only one of those two leads is starting to show signs of new root growth, then go ahead and repot because that means the second lead is not far behind. You already have plan B in the works with the one new lead, as is the case with my cat Leah Lodigesii crossed with Skinnery here. I've got two leads on this orchid, but only one lead is showing signs of new growth, and we are just at the starting point, and the second lead hasn't even started. So I do not wait for both leads to show me signs of root growth. One is sufficient, and on top of that, I prefer not to have that many new roots growing before I go in. If I see one, even if it's just at the nubbin stage, that is my preferred timing to go into a pot because that is when the least amount of damage can happen. I have to add, seeing your roots growing out of the bottom of a pot is not an indicator that you have to repot. It's just a beautiful sign that everything's okay. The most important part is the gargling, the bubbles that prove that there is still space in the pot for more roots and oxygen exchange. But what a beautiful sight. <laughs> it's going to be such a shame to destroy this, but there will be destruction as well because clearly this orchid is not coming out of this pot without me being a little bit radical on getting the microfiber off the roots. It certainly does make for an interesting repot though. History is fundamental as well. If you're just starting with using opaque pots for your collection, then let me put a little guideline out there, no matter what the media is. Consider that you will be repotting your orchid in two years. Now, in my setup of Lekka and self-watering, I can extend that out to three years, depending on how vigorous and active the orchid is. So let me give you my thought process on both of these orchids and what is going on here. The history of my Lodigesi I crossed with Skinnery is she arrived in my collection in July of 2020. She was a gift from the orchid room. She is a very precious orchid to me. And she came as a, like a just out of seedling phase, but we weren't quite the juvenile yet. Now she is a juvenile because the growths that have been growing since I got her have really gotten a size jump on. And I am anticipating that next year, her third year with me is when she's going to bloom. As I mentioned, you can see there's plenty of space in the pot. So why bother her? Well, here's the thing. Usually with any growing method that doesn't have media that is highly water retentive when we, let's say, think of sphagnum moss, which needs a refresh every year so it doesn't go too acidic, but we should always be focusing on two years is the maximum for an orchid to be in her pot before a cleanup is necessary and a media refresh is necessary. So, July 2020. We now are in July 2022. That is my two-year margin, and that is why I'm going to go into the pot. 
the thing with the Katlia Zagarik Wax African Beauty here on the right is she has been in this pot two years as well and she was a division previously and I bumped the pot size up because of her vigorous root growth. Well, here's the thing what's going on with this one. The pot is broken, it is brittle. Back in the day I was cleaning pots with bleach just to make everything shine and spankingly beautifully white and clearly the bleach has compromised whatever protective coating is around the pot and for that reason it is breaking. The bigger this orchid gets after her recovery from the division the heavier she is going to get and this is dangerous it'll fall out of my hands one day very quickly and that is a scary thought. So even though this orchid has plenty of room in the pot and shouldn't be disturbed, doesn't have to be disturbed, could be left for a third year. The reason I'm going to go in and have a root ball clean up, might as well do it while I'm at it, is because my pot is broken, otherwise I wouldn't mess with her. But if there still is an air of uncertainty about repotting or not repotting and maybe as a little double checkup after one year because some orchids are just so blessed with very vigorous root growth that they might fill a pot quicker than anticipated which is a great thing if we have to intervene after only a year in the pot that means this orchid is super vigorous we've learned something new but she needs oxygen exchange in the pot so if there's any doubt as to whether an orchid needs to be repotted or not and you're new to growing in not clear pots then always go for the option of filling the pot and the mask up to the brim give it a good good soak and see if you're getting bubbles and see if you can hear the gargling there should be gargling watch how the water recedes all those three indicators give you an idea that there's plenty of oxygen exchange in the pot and a repot is not required. This is the safest and best method to be able to make like a quick check when you're, for example, giving a CalMag soak. Just watch how the pot behaves. Now the water has stopped receding, but the reason it should be receding and bubbling and gargling is that we can guarantee when we flush our pots that their oxygen is still able to move and circulate around within our pots and our media hasn't become compacted, as would be the case with organic growing. In this setup, clearly my LECA will not compact, but the fact that the roots are growing and filling in all the gaps in and around the LECA that makes the pot solid and reduces the chance of very good oxygen exchange even when we flush. No matter the media, you don't want a stagnant pot that doesn't have access to fresh oxygen on a regular basis. Now, let's have a look and see what Lodi Jessii is doing here, crossed with Skinnery, and how this pot responds to filling up the whole pot with water. So you see we have some bubbles not as many as we did with the Sagarique wax, but it's okay. The water is receding, so that means that there's still space in between the roots. So even if I wasn't going to go in right now, I know that, you know, apart from the fact she's got plenty of room to grow new growths, she is going to be fine for another year if I were not to intervene now. Between the two of them, this one is a must broken pot can't do that it's too risky this one i could leave another year so why am i going in for this one specifically and not just letting it go clearly the pot is fine and this is a point you may want to make for yourself with every single orchid depending on how you want to progress to getting a seedling to juvenile to blooming size orchid to bloom sooner rather than later that is understanding the possibility and the chances of a first time bloomer and when that could coincide with when you need to be repotting your orchid two years i could leave it a third year but she has matured now to a complete juvenile i am anticipating blooms from one of the two new growths that are coming right now i do not want to have to forfeit those blooms because next year I would have to go in. If she, for example, were not to bloom on these two new growths, then the following year those growths will bloom. So the maturing process of an orchid is also something you need to take into consideration that should these now not bloom, because I am intervening now, we have another root system going for next year. Next year would be the crux time, third year, then we would be extending a non-blooming orchid another year on top of that 
if, for example, the stress of the intervention of a repot stops her from blooming out. Again, bifoliates, they are a different beast when it comes to messing around with the root system. So what I'm doing with the decision of going into this pot now, as opposed to in its third year, is to preempt any kind of disturbance for the next two, maybe three years, so that we can anticipate around about the time that she wants to bloom, we don't have to do any repotting bar any other disaster happening. So let's think positively. We are not expecting a disaster to happen. We are not expecting to intervene next year or the following year. So this orchid can quite calmly, peacefully and happily be in the new pot, everything rejuvenated, and then she can just be on her way with the regular care and bloom. So knowing the phase cycle of your orchid, or if you're moving an orchid, becoming a juvenile into a blooming size orchid, try not to intervene when it is about the point of time that she's going to mature into a blooming size orchid. If you're new to my channel, let me just clarify. Near blooming size, in my jargon, are juveniles. Seedlings are seedlings, or bebés sometimes. <laughs> Right, so what have I done here? Because of the imminent repot of these orchids, the video to that will be linked in the description if you would like to see the repot video. But what I've done here now, as per any media, I have filled my masks and my pots with calcium and magnesium as a pre-soak at 100 parts per million, 60 parts per million of which is cow mag and 40 parts per million is seaweed and I have pH'd it to around 6.7, 6.5 around there because this is a blitz soak. I want the nutrients to be absorbed super quickly and that's why I target the pH to the nutrients that I want absorbed at that point in time. Now you may also ask yourself another question as to why am I pre-soaking in my setup which being self-watering makes the roots constantly wet. So what am I doing? What's the purpose of pre-soaking in such a wet environment when the roots would dislodge easily anyway? It makes a lot more sense for organic growing when you have a wet dry cycle to be doing what I'm doing so that the roots will be easier to remove from any bark that they stick to. Because of my setup, my velamen, of course, is much, much softer and hasn't got the hardness around it. And yet my roots will still stick to LECA. And if I choose to remove the LECA from the existing roots, then I would like to be able to do so also with the least amount of damage. But more importantly is that calcium, magnesium, and seaweed in combination as a soak prior to a repot is perfect to get some strength into the orchid. It is not happening immediately, but it reduces the stress for the next month to six weeks while the orchid settles back into the new pot. So by soaking with calcium and magnesium, you're already giving the orchid the strength for what it will need as it settles into the new pot. The seaweed has growth hormones in it it encourages root growth and all that good fun stuff that we want in our pot, including branching. And that could be vital when it comes to repotting, messing around with a root system, that any roots that we cut off or damage, that they will have some of these hormones in them to trigger branching and help in a speedier recovery. The effect of these three components will not be visible next day after repotting. The metabolism of orchids is so slow that all we can rely on is they've got the nutrients to be able to do what they have to do so that their recovery is a little bit more supported from our side. Let me just put one thought out there if you're seeing this setup and thinking my pH differs in any way to an organic setup when it comes to these blitz soaks for immediate nutrient uptake. It doesn't. No matter whether you grow in organic or inorganic media, the pH of 6.5 is the sweet spot for calcium and magnesium absorption. If you are growing in organic media and your media is very, very old, or let's just say you are getting an orchid in from a nursery and that media looks terrible and very old, 
I highly recommend that you then pH up to about 6.7, 6.8, so that any old media in the pot will not drop the pH any further down below 6.5, just because it is already very acidic. Maximum absorption of calcium magnesium happens at 6.5. Old organic media is acidic, so you are very safe to pH to 6.7, 6.8, and you can rely on the fact that the pH will drop to the range that is optimal for the maximum absorption of calcium and magnesium. If I just started talking in circles, it's because in the background I had some distractions and I do apologize. So if you have any questions with regards to what I was talking about with these two bifoliate divots that will be repotted, please address those in the comments and I'll be really pleased to be able to clarify anything because sometimes I stop recording and I am in doubt if I expressed myself clearly and in an understandable way. So let me say thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and eventually the repot root ball cleanup of these two orchids will be in the description. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.